RTS. That was my RTS start through. Like that was my MOBA start through an RTS. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Game number one underway. Starting over here at the nine o'clock. Representing Team Empire, we got the recent Terran pickup in the blue. We got Braddock. His opponent representing uh, Team Rock's Kiss over in the close air in the green trunks. We got the Protoss Titan. And I got a little bit of a thing where I'm just like, I want to say Titan. Like, that's Russian for those who don't know. Um, welcome in again, guys. I'm Empire TV, Cheesehead Logic. Um, I am Russian, but I live in the States. And as you guys can hear, I basically don't have an accent or anything like that. That's because I've almost lived here, like, almost my whole entire life. But... Fortunately, my Russian has kind of found my roots in through esports and found it into Empire, I guess if you want to call it. All right, so Titan starting off normal nine pylon, sending a probe down to the bottom. And if you guys are not aware of this league, this is actually an IPL team league, basically for Russia and Ukraine. From what I got out of it, um, both both of these teams were in separate divisions. Empire with 20 points and Roxkiss was a well. I think they might have lost one game each to get only 20 points, but basically just absolutely dominated each other's division. Rocked both their ways into the, through the playoffs until they met each other in the winner's final, where Empire beat Roxkiss 4-3. Before Roxkiss had to fight their way back, they played Cascade in the loser's final, able to beat them and seal a spot back in the grand finals, which they took and beat Empire 4-3. Forcing a double elimination grand finals number two. So, Braddock starting off normal in the game. Looking like a 12 racks. 10 supplies. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Titan grabbing a gas right now. So 15 gas from what I would assume. A little bit late. So, I'm interested to see if he's kind of co copping up a little bit more minerals. So, he could get a little bit of an earlier nexus. So, we'll see. <clears throat> But basically, guys, if you're not aware with this map as well, this is Metropolis. Uh, looks like it's definitely the MLG version because the islands are missing. This is actually one of those maps I'm really upset got taken out. I understand a lot of professional players and just in general players over the all over the world were complaining about this map. They had some FPS issues because of the design, whatever. You know what? This was an awesome map. I personally like it. Really cool design. I especially love the islands, so I'm a little bit of a hater on MLG when they took them out. Um, but I just love the design. It's like a nice built natural. It's like a better 4 version of Metalopolis, where it's not just like this obnoxious open natural area. There's actually like rocks blocking off. This is like the one time I love Dustin Browder where rocks are blocking this off. Um, it's really nice, very choky to get to your third. It's not easily accessible. You have to break down some rocks as well, so you have to make some decisions. I, I just really like this map overall. Really, really nice built map. Unfortunately, too many people whined, complained. Ma main, mainly Huck, actually. Th this could all probably route back to Huck just a little bit. Um, as soon as this map came out, man, he was the first one to start whining about FP <laughs> FPS issues. He'll be, the, he'll be actually probably the first person to whine about FPS issues on any type of map. That's always the funny thing. <clears throat> What's up with the overlay block on the mini-map? Is it actually indeed? Oh, it is just a tiny bit. I am very sorry, guys. Um, I can't really lift it. Okay, it's going to block it just a tiny bit. I do apologize. I'll try to adjust it after this game. So we'll we'll get that taken care of post game. Try to figure it out. I do apologize. Just kind of hang tight. I'll, I'll try to do my best, you know, observing and following the actual game itself, so you don't even have to worry about that. Yeah, don't worry, guys. I, I read my chat, even if it is a live cast like this. I'm not exactly in a. I'm, I'm not exactly right now in a suit in the GSL. This is. I mean, even though this is very important, the grand finals number two. I'm still a human being, man. I'm still in early. Sort of an amateur caster, been been around for a little bit, not exactly completely in the amateur ranks, but hey, you know what? You gotta you gotta you gotta consider the viewers, man. You gotta consider the viewers. Alright, so looking at it, Titan moving on over the map. Looks like he's got Zelt and Stalker gonna go try to get a scout off. He went for a very early one gate expand. Hopefully he's adding the additional necessary units. And this is actually really interesting. This is a build we saw earlier when they faced each other in the winner's final, getting the early upgrades, and as you see, Shields is getting 
finished up, he's getting his robo, and I want to see how early he puts down the twilight, because what this could turn into uh, could be a two-base charge lot archon build with early two-base, early double gas, so he's going to really mine that gas heavily, so I don't know if he's going to go into really early Colossus play exactly yet, or is if, he, if he's going to go into charge lot archon. I want to say charge lot archon just due to the fact that one shield was started up fairly early. So here we go, Titan adding in a couple gates. As we look over to Braddock's side of things, basically going just through the standard one Rax expand of a Terran style player. Getting a stem upgrade about halfway done. A little bit supply blocked at the moment, but should be... Oh, no, he won't even be supply blocked at the moment. He... Oh, this is a big, big hit right here. This is actually going to delay his build really uh, kind of bad. He's got Marines clogged up, Marauders clogged up, so he's going to have to free up some supply really soon to produce a lot better, or he might uh, miss that time because you really need those units to help you out uh, to defend from whatever that Protoss might be making. As we look and see, in Titan's main, we got already the first Colossus coming out, so... I mean, not the first Colossus, we got the Robotics Bay, which in turn will get Colossus play, so it looks like he's going to spend the gas on that. Um... Hopefully, Braddock does get a chance to scout this out, as um, you definitely need to be re prepared and ready for Colossi, and you pop out a few Vikings, because, you know, with force fields and the pull Protoss composition, a few good laser shots can really hurt the Terran army value very quick, and you don't want to be caught in that position at all. Now what I'm interested right now, as we do see, Titan is kind of hacking away at the rocks with the Zelts, so it makes me wonder a little bit, is he going to take his uh, third? And he might, um, because with this map layout, it's actually not too hard of a defendable third, as long as you have great positioning and great map coverage. Basically, all the Protoss player does have to worry about is this big, wide open uh, air area where the Terran player can fly all over the place and throw down some drops. As long as he's well aware and has great map vision, he should be able to know what in the world is going on um, and that should allow him to grab his third and kind of just chill between this third and natural area to defend whatever was going on. Braddock doing that really really nice smooth timing the trying to hit around that 10 minute mark with double medevac marine marauder and he does have a chance he does have to be a little bit careful anytime there's a colossus out on the field you have to be very worried about it but with with the unit count, um, it's actually looking a little bit favorable for Braddock. He just has to get a really nice engagement and watch out for force fields because that could ruin his day. Colossus plus Zealots uh, uh, hitting you when uh, a few force fields are up is pretty, pretty rough. Um, as we do see right now, uh, looks like two attack is getting started as, as well as Twilight Council, so he's getting his blink upgrade. So Protoss honestly is looking fine. Um, Terrans do want to put pressure, but this is just one of those battles you don't want to get into without some Vikings. And in turn, we do see Braddock popping at least a couple out right now. He's got four medevacs, and the composition right now, at least the bio army is looking really, really nice. I do like what I'm seeing. Um, adding the additional barracks, adding the additional production to a total of five barracks and one starport. Now just trying to get his Viking numbers up. And that's very smart because you just, at this point, you don't want to engage the Protoss army. unless the, Basically, unless the Colossus are fairly naked with a couple of sentries, you don't want to try to fight that. You need to get some Vikings out and make your bio army with the Vikings very, very cost effective. I do like this also as well, Braddock taking a little bit of map control, walking around as we do see all over the map, trying to scour and see if he can find any pylons, and bam, he will actually run right over one over here, one of Titan's pylons, and that's going to be a nice little win, because what that will do, that will prevent any type of counterattacks or counter warpins as the Terran player is attacking. And, oh, this could be such a huge opportunity for Braddock if he moves up. Three Colossus are out on the map, but a little bit of energy. <clears throat> I apologize, a little bit of minerals have been spent on the third nexus so the economy for braddock still sticking on two base play and now he's got more vikings he's got a nice solid bio ball and if he engages this properly he's got a great chance to win but again has to engage properly maybe even try to get a few viking volleys before he gets even in the first engagement so it's going to be all based up to control and somehow braddock hasn't found this pylon yet but finally will there we go finds it and here we go, guys. Braddock moving up, guy, and we could have a huge engagement coming up here. Four Colossus total out for Titan. Really nice amount of Zelds. Does he have charge? He does not, and that is actually a little bit of a problem right there. 
Um, this would be a lot better position for Titan if he did have charge, catching some of those units with force fields, putting up the guardian shield. He just has to be really careful how he engages. Here we go. Viking Volley's getting nice shots before. Even the Colossus are able to zap. Braddock has a few SEV pulled, so he's taking a little bit of that AoE, some of that damage away from the Colossus. And here we go. All the Zealots are falling apart, but Braddock's army is really getting hit by these Colossus. One, co actually, a total of three Colossus down. Last one going down now, and Titan has to pull his probes to be able to defend this. He should be able to hold off. Vikings land, and oh, I think just Braddock has enough to break through. 101 supplied at 52. Now the whole natural is getting ravaged. He should lift the Vikings up again to try to take out the Colossus. He will right away. And Titan is looking in dire straits, guys. It is not looking good. Most of the economy gone for the Protoss player. Down to a total of 25 pros. Meanwhile, the Terran player is still rallying units in. And he's got stalkers and basically getting picked off on the backside by some of these rallying marauders not even noticing. And yeah, this is just a really, really nice timing by Brad Octane. Try to uh, play the macro game out, but was caught a little bit with his pants unzipped. Here we go. Game number one going to Empire.